Amperage testing. Let's talk about it. So, um, Amperage tests are done quite a bit differently than your average uh, voltage test, and it's completely different. So in our voltage test, we know that we hook up our meter in parallel, meaning it provides uh, electricity an alternative route to flow. We can't do that with an ammeter because we need to be able to see exactly how many, uh, or I'm sorry, how much amperage is flowing through the circuit. And if I give it an alternate route, then I am either going to uh, blow up the meter, depending on where I hook that up, or I am going to get an inaccurate reading because it's not catching all of the current flow. So how do we do that? We hook it up in series. You guys remember series circuits? Where uh, it is hooked up in a series, meaning we force electricity to go through that meter. So there's a couple of ways to do that. Probably the most common amperage test that is performed is what we call a parasitic load test or an ignition off draw or an IOD test, uh, I believe as ProDemand puts it in some of the man uh, manufacturers. Those tests are trying to catch uh, amperage flow when it's not supposed to be happening. So the max amount is uh, less than ha uh, half an amp. It's actually 0 0.05 amps that you're allowed without everything on or anything on. But when you do that, we hook up the meter in series on the battery. So we'll disconnect a battery cable and or the battery cable, and then we will hook up the meter in series. So I'm gonna disconnect that and I would hook up, sorry, my meter like this. So my one lead would go to the chassis ground and the cable, while the other lead is going to the actual terminal and the battery. So we are forcing current flow through the meter back to the battery. That is in series. Now, the problem with that test is that it's testing the current flow of the whole car. Um, and then from there, if you have too high of a reading, you keep pulling fuses until that reading drops and then you know what circuit's the faulty circuit. Um, but if you wanted to test the current flow through it, one particular circuit, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. It's not usually very easy to just disconnect wires. It's not, you know, your car's not a Lego set in the, in the same sense. And so uh, the easiest route and what most people will do because it is easy and we give us our uh, negative battery cable back is to bypass the fuse. So a lot of people will take the fuse out and they will hook up one lead to the outlet of the fuse and the other lead to the inlet of the fuse. So current has to flow through the meter. Now you're only doing this momentarily, which is why it's not really a problem that your fuse isn't in there. Um, but if at some point in time you do get a current spike, the meter is now the fuse because the meter does have a fuse in it, but um, your fuse is not there. So that's a problem. Um, but this is super common. Uh, theoretically, you could take out the switch, but then you lose all control of the circuit. That might not be an issue for you. But what you don't want to do is unscrew your load and then put the meter in series because this meter in the amp setting, as I said in the previous video, has no ohms. And so if you remove the, all the resistance in that circuit uh, or even some of it, so let's say it's a series circuit and you removed one of the light bulbs and put the meter in place. You might not blow up the meter like you would say in a simple circuit, but you're gonna get an inaccurate reading because didn't you change the resistance in the circuit? Therefore, your current flow is not gonna be what it normally is. So that's how we hook up an ammeter. Um, it needs to be in series, super, super, super important. Now, we don't really wanna hook up our ammeter like this in circuits that are above uh, 10 amps. First reason is that your meters are generally fused at 10 amps. And so anything past 10 amps, it's just gonna pop the meter fuse really, really quickly. Um, and there are circuits in the car that are higher than 10 amps. So they do make amp clamps. I don't have one with me, but um, before earlier in the, um, the videos last week, I did mention that current and magnetism have a special relationship. I can use current to, uh, to actually provide a magnetic field and I can use magnetism to provide a current. 
Well, in the event of current flow already in a circuit, any wire that carries current flowing through it actually does produce, even if it's not a coil of wire, uh, just current flowing through a wire does produce a small amount of magnetism. And so they make inductive amp clamps that will clamp around the wire. You don't have to hook anything up in, or disconnect anything. It just clamps around the wire and utilizing the magnetic field coming off of that wire can tell you how much amperage is running through there. Now, um, depending on the type of circuit, you're either gonna need one that has a high capability or a very, very low capability, um, but those can get really, really pricey. Um, and you want something that's nice and accurate if you are going to utilize those. So don't get a Harbor Freight amp clamp. Don't get a Harbor Freight meter, just right off the bat. Don't, don't do it, don't do it. Um, it's better than nothing, especially to get a nice free meter, but um, anything decent's not free, right? So I would recommend, say, something like a fluke meter. Even a craftsman meter is not bad um, because I know pricing can be uh, tough, but this is one of those tools that I would definitely invest in um, because you're, you're going to be able to do a lot with it. Um, and, and once you start getting used to it, you, you'll use it all the time. So it'll definitely be one of those tools that's worth it. But that's how you hook up an amp test. Um, I will go ahead and show you uh, on the board how we do that. Okay, so we are going to look at amperage testing. Um, we've got the same circuits that we had for our voltage testing, but this time around, we're going to hook it up differently. And we're going to set it up differently, right? So first things first, right off the bat, something's already wrong. Um, let's see what happens when I go to try to measure amps. Notice how it beeped at me. Let's try that again. It beeped and it said lead because it's telling me, hey, silly, you're in the wrong hole. But if I was to hook this meter up across my power source right now, I would pop the fuse inside this meter because this is not, uh, this, there's no resistance between these terminals here. I would simply be creating a short circuit. So when I'm doing any sort of amperage testing, uh, as soon as I'm done, I like to turn off the meter and I pull the red, pull the red lead. It keeps me from accidentally leaving it there for another test. Um, if you're gonna accidentally leave it in a hole, leave it in the voltage hole. But in this case, we want to test this one. So down here it says 10 amps fused. So if I'm running a circuit that is more than 10 amps, um, this meter is not going to work. We're going to need another tool for that or an amp clamp. So we're in the amp hole now. Um, we're going to go ahead and set our meter to DC amps. It was telling me lean in the other one. And then we need to hook this up in series, right? Well, in this circuit, it's really easy. In fact, in this case, I'm uh, simply just going to, again, it's a series circuit. So we are going to see, um, we are going to see the same amperage no matter where we are. So we'll just go ahead and, uh, and, and put it anywhere. But if it was a parallel circuit, the amperage would change in each branch, right? So notice my lights went out. This meter now becomes a really fancy jumper wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that. And by connecting my meter, I have hooked up the circuit and created continuity. And you can see here, we are getting a total of 0 0.09 DC amps. So right now we're looking at, um, if I have no connection, we're gonna see zero amperage flow. But if I have connection, we've got somewhere, oops, roughly 0 0.091 amps. Um, obviously, if I was to lose continuity, we have no amps. So that's sort of a good way to look at that. Um, no continuity, no flow, and that's, that's what it looks like in real life. Um, again, this is how we would do maybe a parasitic load test on um, a vehicle, but that's amp testing in a nutshell. So make sure that you leave any questions in the comments um, and I can go ahead and answer them for you.